Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for uh, Space Marines and specifically I'm going to be showing you how to paint Imperial Fists. There's one of the sergeants that's come up, I think that's the best model that I've done so far. Really nice looking, uh, they've come out really well. It's going to be an interesting tutorial this one. I'm going to show you how to do transfers and especially on uh, curved surfaces, absolute nightmare they can be. Um, I've developed a technique, I don't know if it's the best but it seems to work really well for me and I'll show you later on how to do those. There's a number of transfers on this one. So there's the sergeant. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a regular Space Marine. Uh, so there's one of the Imperial Fists that I've already done. So I'm going to show you how to paint to this standard. And uh, this is the Marine that we're going to be painting here. So we're going to take this guy from start to finish. I'm going to show you every stage. And uh, all you need to do is follow along. Uh, do each stage, press pause on the video. Um, and then just follow it along. I encourage you just to paint one if you're new to this. Uh, have a practice and then when you're confident enough you can start painting in batches. Um, I usually paint about 10 at a time. So excited about this video. Uh, I know that Space Marines are pretty much the most popular faction in Warhammer 40,000. Uh, the game wouldn't be the same without them. So uh, what I would say is that I'm doing these as Imperial Fists but the basic techniques you can apply to any of the chapters. Uh, just still, uh, whatever colour you choose, green, blue, red, um, I would use the same technique as I'm going to show you here for this one. But yellow for the Imperial Fists is a particularly hard colour to get right and that's what had put me off for a long time uh, painting them. But I've developed a pretty effective technique for them and uh, it's worked out really well. So we're going to show you from start to finish how to paint an Imperial Fist Tactical Marine and you'll be able to apply this technique to uh, any units in the Imperial Fists and also the vehicles as well. Uh, it'll be the same technique, nothing changes. Uh, so if I show you this Marine, you'll be able to apply it to all the other units and vehicles uh, for the Imperial Fists. Right, so paints you'll need. Uh, there's a fair, fair few, not too bad. Uh, so we'll go for inks first of all, or shades. You've got the Agrax Earth Shade. It's the first one, and then Nuln Oil, and then uh, Seraphim Sepia, uh, those three shades you'll need. I'm just going to run through the names of the paints that I have. Some of them are the older colours. Uh, if you're not sure which colours which, then just look up on Google, just Google search uh, Games Workshop or Citadel Paint Conversion Chart, and it will tell you the old paint names and then the new paint names. Uh, as I call these out. Those three there are, are the new colours. And then the new colour here, Flash Gits Yellow. Then uh, Blood Red. And then there's another red that we use as well, slightly different. Why is Daca Red? Also. And then a Blazing Orange. Scorched Brown. And then the old bleached blown, which is Ushabati bone. And then uh, Codex Grey. A bad on black. Keramite, red, keramite white, or the old uh, skull white. And then two metallics, Hashak Copper. And Iron Breaker, which is the old uh, chain mount. So those are the colours you need, not too bad. Um, pretty much need all of those um, for this project. So that's the figure there, prepared and ready to go. Uh, so preparation is key for this, it's going to save you a lot of time. So what I've done is uh, I've sculpted the whole figure and glued them together and then I attached him to the base but what I do is you want him to remove the figure from the base uh, just for priming and colouring of the base uh, when you spray it. So I just put a, a tiny drop of the glue on one foot, I leave the other one loose and then just a small speck of glue just on the tip of the foot just enough to when it dries it holds the figure in place whilst you're doing the basing. That holds him in place there and then the basing has just been done with uh, PVA glue and then I've got my sand and my stones that I sprinkle on top once that's all dry, I then snap the figure off and that leaves the base with the, the footprints in place and then the figure by himself. And the two are sprayed separately. So the base 
Uh, I spray with the dark grey that I use, the Stealth paint. So it's the Montana Gold range and the name of this paint is Stealth. It's like a dark grey. Uh, you can get these on eBay, I think I buy mine from. Uh, there's other places that stock them, but it's Nerosol paint, it's for graffiti artists. Um, so there's other websites that specialise in supplying them that you'll be able to get the spray from as well. It's not too expensive either to buy. So that's what I spray the base with. And then separate from that, uh, and the key here to mastering this yellow, because it is a difficult colour. Uh, if you start with a dark colour and try and build yellow up, uh, it's going to look blotchy and it's going to be a lot of hard work and frustration. So then what I've done here is that I spray this yellow and then really that base yellow isn't disturbed too much and it leaves it nice and smooth. Um, but you'll see that as we go along. So the first thing I do, uh, the figure comes in grey plastic. So I give it a light coat of uh, Skull White by Games Workshop um, as a base spray. Now you're going to put two layers of spray on so you don't want to put it on too thick. So it's just a, a coat that covers the figure um, but not too strong. Then after the white is done, I'm using the Demonic Yellow and that's by uh, Army Painter. Perfect yellow for Imperial Fists um, and I give it a coat of that. Does it, you don't have to worry about it being completely solid yellow. You'll see that that's, it's quite strong um, but it's not too thick a layer. Don't worry about that because you're going to fix that as you go along. But two light coats is enough. Once that's completely dry you're then able to glue at full strength using the full amount of glue on both feet and then stick the figure back onto the base again and then let that dry completely and then your figure is ready to go. You've got your base colour for the basing done, your rim is the correct colour and then the marine is coated fully in the yellow paint. That gives you a massive head start. Preparation work is key for this one uh, and as I said uh, if you're painting any other chapter, I would do it the same way. If you're doing ultramarines, then I would uh, do the basis, spray them, and then give the figure a spray of the blue or green if it's salamanders or red if it's um, blood angels, whatever. That's the same technique. And that just saves you lots of time, as I said, and then you're ready to get straight on uh, with the next stage, which is base colours. Right, so we're going to go on to the first colour here and I do Iron Breaker first. It's all the metallic parts of the figure and the key here is you do need to be neat for this one. In other videos I say there's certain times you don't need to be too neat but here you want to be pretty neat uh, because you don't want to disturb this yellow surface that's already been done for you um, because you're just going to go straight onto shades of that. So you want to be generally neat and that's why I'm going to use uh, a detail brush here. You can use a size higher if you wish, it's no problem. I'm just going to hold open this lid here, just keep that open. So, I'm going to paint the bolt gun here, filling in that gap there. Now it doesn't matter if I get the paint over the area that's going to be the black casing because I'll go around neatly with the black. Uh, it's just the yellow I don't want to get paint onto. So fill all that in. Now one coat won't give it a perfect coat. That means that you'll still see uh, a little bit of the yellow through it but not significant enough to worry about because you're going to go over it again later once the shading's done. So just all round a figure there. I'm just going to reach right inside up under the under the arm and get the other side of the gun and then the hand grip underneath is silver all the front part of the gun sticking out so that's all going to be filled in just down the barrel which I've drilled out by the way uh, with just a drill bit by hand just I think it makes a good I think it looks much better when you have a real hole there instead of a solid on there and just along the top of the gun the bolter on the top there and then behind just making sure you cover all the angles you don't want any yellow showing and just the 
hand grip just under the, his fist there. Just catch it on both sides. And then the rest of the bolter. But say his technique isn't fast, but um, it's not painfully slow. For the result that you're getting, which is a really nice looking figure, uh, the technique isn't too bad. So just looking over for other bits, the uh, piping and wire work on the inside of the backpack there. I'll just fill that in. I mean, if you get paint on the yellow here, the silver's not too bad. It's an easy colour to recover from. If I get paint on there, I'm not too fussed about it because I can repair that. No problem. And what I'm doing now is just the rim of like the air intakes or whatever they are, exhaust parts here. So you can see that just running around. I'm being neat here. I don't want to make, make a mistake on this part. And then just filling them in. Solid. One. And two. Probably base colours is one of the longest stages. There's a skull here on the backpack. That is silver and I'm making sure I get all the sides. Two little bolt bits at the on either side of the backpack there. One, two. And then these bits, the inside of them, I'm gonna fill in. This guy I've put grenades on. So I'm gonna do those in the silver as well. Now the three stages that I show, it's the same for all the miniatures and all the painting tutorials that I've done. Three stages, base colours, shades, and then final highlights. You can paint to either stage, so if you want a basic army then just follow stage one and the army will look alright, the colours will be right. And if you want it to look a bit more professional, then follow stage two, you can do the shading, and then for the ultimate finish, um, then stage three, it's the final highlights. That's where the, the, the detail really comes out. And uh, it is worth doing stage three, uh, just because it really brings the figure to life. See, I've got um, silver on the uh, shoulder pad there. I'm not worried about it because I can repair that. It's a colour that I can easily go over again on the latter stage. It's darker colours like black that are more of a problem. So I'm just looking around the figure here. Uh, up under the chest, there's like a grill type of thing. I'm just being fussy here and just reaching in there. That's that done. And just looking around. Don't think there's anything else. That's about it. So, that's done for that stage. Next colour I do is the black. So a bed on black. These are the two key colours, the ones that are the most time consuming. And so you get those two done and then it's just smaller bits to do. So, for the black, it's the shoulder pads, and this is where you're going to need to be neat. So, uh, up under the shoulder pad, here, done, and then just the inside of the shoulder pads as well. Come around as much as you can see, and then the trim which you want to be as neat as possible on this one. If you make a glaring mistake it's worth getting the paint off whilst it's wet at this stage. So just run the paint along. If there's anywhere it's, you're going to make a mistake it'll be these shoulder pads, they are difficult. Uh, but um, neatness is what you need here. And then again just the strip on the other side. That's alright, I've got away with that. And then just on this side as well. Okay. Then keeping your fingers out of the way, you don't want to smudge the paint you've done. So a couple of fingers on the base and then a finger on the top of the uh, shoulder pad is enough of a grip so that you can keep the rest of your fingers away. Just up underneath the shoulder pad there. 
And then on the inside, you can see it there. I don't like that being seen, so I try and fill that in with the black as neat as I can. It's quite awkward, um, but that's, that's got that. And then can't see it on the other side, so I'll leave it. I'm just gonna that done. Then there's little um, piping bits that come out just underneath the shoulder pad on that side, and then on, on this side as well. So I do those in black. And then they have them on the feet as well. This one's covered by a purity seal. And so is that one. So there isn't one, but usually there is one just on the side there. See if I can show you on one of the other Marines. So you can see it on this Marine here. Uh, we've got the black piping that comes out. Then uh, put that on if it's visible. And then just looking around, it's not much else, just the bolt gun really. So I paint it from the from behind there and neat now because you've done your silver so you want to be neat with the black that's coming on all right and then just run along the top bring it up neatly on top there and just tucking the black in there and then across the top of the bolter just there just like that and then this is the part where you need to be neat here I'm just running the brush along around and then here you get these two colours done and then the marine is <clears throat> already starting to look the part. have got this wing design here on the gun, being careful not to go over that. Just going to touch that in there. And then around the skull. Along the top of the skull. That's fine. Tilting the marine up and just filling in along the top of the bolter. And it looks pretty good. So that is about that for the black, so that's that key stage done as well. Well the next colour I'll do is the bronze and I use that on the chest and I just take some of the copper here and I put it on my palette because it's quite thick, I'm going to water it down, it's an older paint here. Um, if you're using it straight from the pot and newer paint then you won't need to do this. Um, but I'm just keeping the paint nice and flowing. Then onto a yellow surface, it doesn't look too bad. So, um, for the Blood Angels, for example, I was using a brown as a base colour, but for this particular one, there's no need for that. The bronze is strong enough, and yellow's not too bad a starting colour. Just run that around the chest, just like that. Just there. And it's looking pretty good. That is about it. So that's that colour done. As I said to you before, once the black and the silver is done, that's your main colours out of the way. Um, it's not too important now what colours I'm just grabbing the colours here I know, I know I need to do. I've got the Wazdaka red here and I use that for uh, sort of the, the red part of the seal on the purity seal and I just run around the model with that like so. Just notice something there's a mould line on the figure here. At this stage it's not too late to get rid of that. I just take that off. That's that gone. Don't like mold lines look horrible if they show up. So I'm just going to take the opportunity to get rid of that. That's gone. And I'll be able to go over that later on and you won't notice it with the yellow. So there's a purity seal there. And then there's another one here. 
I did put quite a few purity seals on the imperial fists just to uh, enhance them a bit more. I think it works it's quite nice. So there's that one all the way around. And there's another one here just on the shoulder pad that I stuck on. Let me just run that around there. That's it. Uh, that's all the purity seals done. Then to follow on from the purity seals, you may as well, or the red, you may as well do the bone colour. And that's just on the paper part of the purity seal. So nice and neat at this stage, there's no need to make a mess of it. I'll just run around. That's one. The one here. And again, one coat of that goes on perfectly with that base yellow colour. See how quickly the miniature comes together because you've done that base colour of the yellow. You haven't got to worry about it, you can just get straight on with the surrounding details. Then the uh, ammo pouches and packs I do all of those in um, a scorched brown that's the old colour um, not sure what the new colour is called pigment on this one's quite nice so again one coat if it's not quite solid don't worry about it because you will go over it again later on so there's no need to worry about it if it's not entirely solid and again just stick into the detail brush I've got more control and I'm wanting to be neat here the more neater you are then uh, the less repair work you have to do so and it's not vast areas to cover with a brush it's all just picking out features and details of the figure so that's just gone on fine and just going around it there Sure I've got underneath. Done. Next colour is the red. And I just use that to fill in the eyes. Don't want too much water on the brush. Nice flow to it. And I want to be neat here. So I just take point the tip of the brush in, covering doing both sides so that I can get that in there nice and neat and then just on the other side point it in that end and then point it in this end and there's another colour which I should have done earlier really it doesn't really matter I take the iron breaker we've still got the base to do as well but we'll count that in with the base colours doesn't matter take my palette and this is a dark metallic colour. Um, I don't like doing solid black and I don't like doing the silver. I like to mix the two to create a darkened, sort of a very dark sort of silver. So I'm going to mix in a fair bit of this about in black here. And I use that on the, the ribbing or the joins on the marine. So under the where the armour joins together, you see like a ribbed effect. I used that colour to fill those in. It just breaks up the yellow armour and uh, you, you need to do it, it's how it's shown in the book as well. It's, it's not just silver which is too light but it's not black which is too stark and the shoulder pad's already in black. It's sort of a dark and silver colour. And this paint, I'm keeping it nice and flowing. But you don't want it too thin. For this one, I want it thick enough so that I can put on uh, one coat and then that's it. I'll not come back to it again. I'll not do any more to it. I'm just going to fill in the on the wrist there, just underneath the figure, just on the wrist. And then I know there's a, you can see it on the inside of the armour there, where the the elbow 
meets on the inside of the arm. Can't see it there. Then, because you've got a fine brush, you can reach inside the neck and then paint the join of the where the head joins the body there, just underneath the head. Then I also fill in the breathing mask and fill that in. Make sure I get all the all that cavity filled in nicely. Good. Then also, this is a fiddly part, the, little, the join on the backpack. There. Which is also tricky. So now I've got a bit to do at the back of the legs here. So you can see it there. Again, being neat here, because I don't want to come back to this. cracking out a lot of these Imperial Fists. I've got a number of tactical squads, so this is what I've been painting recently. It's coming around, it's looking pretty good. And often where the hand opens up, you'll see it as well, but here, where it is holding the gun, you can't see it, so don't need to worry about it. But uh, that's your base colours for the Marine. I'm just checking to see if there's anything else. No, that's it. So, that's your base colours done. There, and uh, he pretty much looks the part. I'm just going to do the base here. And you just need two colours for that. To start it off. The old Codex Grey. And the white. And I'll switch now to... Uh, you can use a standard brush, or the next one up you can use a base coat brush. I'm going to use a base coat brush. And it's quite an old brush, and it's a rough one. Take the Codex Grey and I just spread it out on the palette. I don't want too much grey on the brush. And then I simply just highlight the base, all the sand. Working it in, I don't skim it lightly, I just sort of scrub it into the base. There. And there. And then whilst the grey is still on the brush, there's no harm because you don't want stark white. Then I take some of the white, mix that on into the palette, and it's kind of an off-white now. It's not completely white. And then a basic highlight all the way around there just gets that looking really good. It brings up the highlight nicely. Any mistakes, just rub them off with your finger from the base. And that is it. Right, so that's the base colours done. I'm going to go on to shading now, and this is where having that base colour already done really helps out. You're just looking to shade the figure. So I'm going to use a, it's a new brush here, it's a base coat brush, but it's a new one. It's got a nice tip to it, and it's going to hold plenty of the wash. And to save time, I'm going to do two shades at once, uh, but they'll be in different areas, so they won't interrupt each other. So we'll do the Seraphim Sepia first. And you're looking to shade the figure, but without going over the detail too much. So, areas that get it solidly is that crest. You want to put that brown shade onto the crest. Then, I'll just run around the armour here. And then, I'm being neat now, so I'm filling in the eye cavity. And the details. And then just the helmet and then that crack that runs up on the top of the helmet there and then just along here but I'm not covering all the yellow there's no need to do it entirely just the areas that need it this brush is quite big if you find that you're blurring the detail too much and just switch to something else slightly smaller brush here it just gives you a bit more control. Underneath the shoulder pads 
here in all the cracks of the armour. But the main panel areas, um, I'm not going to interrupt. We'll just leave them as they are. I'm just shading in the fingers here. Just holding the gun. Making sure I'm just filling all the detail. And then in and around and behind the backpack, I'm not going to reach that area of the yellow much later on, so I want to make sure it's all shaded and uh, out of the way. And just around the gren grenades. And then, and if you've got lots of detail clustered together, then just do that solid. I'm just going to use my finger to get some of the wash off of there. I'm going to fill in these holes with the wash. You can see the detail on the marine. Really starting to get picked out now. Just around where the metal meets the yellow there. Just running the detail around there, just on the shoulder pad. It just blends that in. Then the purity seal, that gets a coat of the shade, we'll do this purity seal down here as well that's it, up and under up and under there around the knees this shade it helps to pick out all of the armoured pieces and all of the detail and just around the feet Virtually paint the whole foot by just avoiding the big areas. See the big panels on the leg there. Just avoid them. No need to shade them in. Just make work for yourself otherwise. And then this purity seal down here. Just the red and uh, the bone colour can all be shaded. And the same here. And then even the joins in the legs where you've gone over in that metallic black colour, just shade that as well, I'm just shading the ammo pouch there as well, just it links the whole thing together and we're looking pretty good just there in the chest I can see that the shade hasn't got in, that's it and then I'm just going to stick a brush right in amongst there, wiggle it around make sure that's all shaded there, so I think that's pretty much it and you can see now that shade has really enhanced that figure. I'm just getting in behind the backpack there. I can see here a little bit more shading on the backpack to do. That's it. Make sure the eye sockets are filled in. And you can see how nicely that figure has come out. Just that simple shade and that has brought it to life. And the last part of the Seraphim Sepia is just the shading on the base and you just blotch it on. Make sure you cover the feet. Uh, I put the shading all around there and then just in patches on the rest of the figure. And that just brings that grey to life a little bit. Um, adds a bit of colour to that base. And that's that done. That's the Sepia done. The other colour I've got out at the moment is the Nuln Oil. And that's obvious where that's going to go. This is for the bolt gun. And I'll just run that across the bolter and that just picks out all the detail again and shades that nicely it's a nice general coat making sure I cover the whole thing and again that's good and then making sure I dab in paint so it fills in that hole where the barrel of the gun is then up inside behind that's good and then just looking around I also do the grenades at the back here, fill them in. And that's that done. And then I do the grills here. Fill them in as well. The skull on the backpack, fill that in. And that's about it. I can fill that in with the black as well. So 
that's that gun picked out as well. So that's the first two stages. Uh, there is one the Agarac Reserve shape, we have to do it after, but that has to be done once this figure is completely dry. So we'll leave this one to dry, and then we'll do the final part of the washers next. Right, the next step is the Agrax Earth Shade. It's the last stage here um, for the shading. And again, the crest, and then when you put this layer on, it will really pick out the detail for you. Uh, make sure you get it all the way around, and where it actually joins onto the armour as well. It'll make sure you get that part. And then any area where there's strong shading, so I'm just going to put it around the armor here. I'm not going to bother in between the arm. Um, just around the fingers again, where there's a, like a strong amount of shading required. I'm not going to bother around the shoulder pad. This is the purity seal, uh, the red part here is going to get it again. And then just in between the gap there, but I'm not going to cover the whole of that purity seal. Don't need it. And just around the other purity seal here. Just in the gap in the knees is quite a strong colour. There, in between the feet. Um, but again, it's not compulsory to do the entire thing. Eye sockets. Other parts of the helmet. Uh, the metallic parts on the side of the head. Um, definitely on the inside of the backpack there all that wiring and so on, it's a nice shade there, it's all filled in. And then the metal here, the grill, now you notice I'm going over the metal here, so what you're doing is you're introducing a little bit of brown and that just helps age the metal a little bit. I want these guys to look like they've been on campaign, they've, you know, they've been fighting, they've fought a thousand battles on a thousand different worlds. So. I'm really shading that in and adding to the effect. See the holes here? I'll fill those in again with this shade and that really picks them out. And then just use a finger, take off the excess ink. The grenades, they'll definitely need to be shaded deeper. Colour, so I fill them in and then here the ammunition pouch as well on the front and behind. The grill on the back. Wherever you want to strengthen the shade is the rule, then just apply um, this uh, Agrax Earth Shade. It's just going around this one, Purity Seal. And then the bolt gun itself as well, a second shade onto that will pick out that detail nicely. Just enhancing what's already there, because that sepia shade isn't quite strong enough to do the job by itself. I'm just feeding the ink into the crevices there. Don't bright stark colours hidden there, I want that all shaded in so that the eye's not drawn to an area that you've missed, which won't look very good. And then filling in that hole once again just to make sure it's solidly filled in. I'm just looking at the miniature here, looks alright. Everywhere is shaded in. So that's that finished. Now you've completed the second stage and that is uh, looking really good. The details picked up. Look at that backpack, it's come up really nice. Um, just with a few simple shades there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could leave it after the second stage. You've got your base colours on and then you've got some shading effects on that. And that, that force would look really nice. So that's your shading done, looking good. We'll let that dry and then we'll go on to the final stage and that will transform it from this to this. There's not too much difference, but uh, just a few little bits to do, and that will really bring the figure out. But uh, there is the details are important, it will bring the figure up looking good. If you're wondering about uh, people have been asking how do you paint faces and skin, like on the sergeant here, uh, you can see that it's come out really nice. Um, Colours for that are the base colour, just goes straight on one coat, dwarf flesh, it's the old colour. And once this drive your shading, you go over it in the seraphim sepia. And then pick out the, 
for stronger details like the eye sockets and the mouth uh, with your Agrax Earth Shade. Once it's all dry, uh, then you'd repaint it with the, the old dwarf flesh and then mix up a watered down bleached bone or the old Ashabati bone or the new Ashabati bone and a little bit of dwarf flesh mixed together and then just pick out the extreme highlights like the top of the head, eyebrows, nose and so on. Uh, but for more details about that, the Imperial Guard painting tutorial that's on the way uh, the guardsman there has hands and a face that I'll be showing you how to paint so the full details of that will be on that video and you'll be able to refer to that uh, for the painting of flesh. Right, so we're on to the third and final stage now, that's the final highlights and this is where you're going to make the miniature really come to life. Um, now the next painting stage here uh, is you're going to work on the yellow and uh, it's the most time consuming part but basically you're just going to neaten what you've already got there. Now I've found that if you paint yellow directly on uh, it makes the miniature look too yellow almost and it's a hard colour to build up so what I do is take the yellow and then add some white to it and uh, roughly it's I take three blobs of yellow and then this is an old white hair which I'm using up, so I'll just dip the brush straight in. And I've taken two blobs of white. It's not quite 50-50, uh, there's more yellow. You're just lightening that yellow by a shade. And with that white in the, mixed in with the yellow, it'll make it a stronger colour as well. And you'll better cover the surface area. And you're just looking to go over the miniature and around the detail and neaten it up so just this armour on the back here now I'm actually using a standard brush and I'm doing that deliberately, it's forcing me to be generally neat, if I used a very fine detail brush, which I could use then I would spend forever painting these and it's taking a long long time so by using a standard brush it makes me keeps it neat but generally neat and not covering absolutely everything just the main areas uh, that you want to get neatened up so these panels and so on on the leg you see that leg uh, is a lot more tidy now and just where the, the washes have uh, gone over the edges that can all be tidied up now I'm just going around that there a little bit on the back of the foot, not too fussed about picking every single detail out. Um, if you're not too fussy, you'll, you'll uh, cut the time it takes to do this stage in half. There's that repair that I needed to do. Just cover that up. That's fine. And coming around. It takes a while but it's not too bad, keeping the paint with a nice flow to it. Having the white mixed in gives it a stronger pigment which helps. And I'm just covering the front of the leg here. Looks good. Because you're doing, because the armour is going to be dirtied and uh, sort of seasoned look to it, then slight mistakes and bits you miss won't stand out so much. A bit too much yellow in this foot cavity bit there. That's better. And just working on the other leg panel. So again, all the yellow. That just helps that yellow armour to stand out. So not being too strict. I'm about 70 or 80 percent. Um, sort of straightness of what I'm painting. I'm leaving the non-essential bits not being too fussy. That means I can get through these quite quick and still not lose out on the neatness really. I think it's going to make much difference. So you can see that I've just neatened the backpack there, I've just running the brush over the top and that picks out all that detail. I've gone round uh, the detail on there, just keeping the paint watered, flowing nicely. 
Then on the shoulder pad where the washes have, have made a mess, just neat, neating it up. Now I'm not going right into the corners, I'm keeping that shading there and it just blends that transition to the black and yellow just nicely. And I'm just running it in, so that shoulder pad's done. So whereas with just the washes the figure looks almost kind of smudged, you're now sharpening the whole thing up and giving it a crisp look to it. Picked out the fingers here, I've done the arms and the backpack's done. Come out pretty well, just the top part of the chest there, the head details have all been picked out, especially around the face. If you think you're struggling with this size brush, then just switch to like a detail brush at a good point, just to pick out the details around the head. And that's where the eye is drawn to, the features of the head, so it's worth getting that bit neat. That's what people will look at straight away. And we're pretty much there, I'm just checking the miniatures. Covered, pretty good, it looks alright. It's easy to miss apart. But uh, no, that's done. So, you can see the details picked out again there. It's all enhanced and sharpened up. And uh, that's brought that yellow to life. And it's, you can see that it's not, it is a different yellow. Now, now you've added that white. I think pure yellow like this is too strong. Too strong looking, it clashes with other colours. It's quite overpowering. Uh, but that off yellow, when you add a bit of white, uh, just creates... Um, a better shade, I think. And the shading helps keep it um, toned down, so it's not too stark looking. I think it looks quite good. So that's that stage done. Uh, that's probably the longest, one of the longest stages to do. Now, when I got to this stage uh, of painting the Imperial Fist, there was two directions I could go in. The first was to uh, highlight the details, that's where you, you mix up a lighter shade, like a, you mix more white with the yellow and you pick out all the details, just a standard highlight. Um, I wasn't too keen on that idea, the more white you add to this and the more stark it would get and the more uh, it would not be yellow. So instead I went for a, a chipped effect here and that's a good idea because it saves you having to do that highlight that takes ages, you're just adding a few chips on and uh, that also adds to the effect of the figure uh, looking quite seasoned and sort of battle hardened. If I just bring the figure in here you can see it and you can see that sort of chipping effect on the armour and I think that looks a lot better. You're actually making the armour look metallic and, and um, armoured and reinforced and that's the effect you want with Space Marines, they're armed with power armour and uh, so you want to create that effect. So what we do, I usually do the chipping last, so we're going to, there's a few other colours and bits to do, and then uh, we can do that last stage. Next colour, we'll do is the, we'll work on these purity seals here. And for that you want the Wazdaka red, and then just the white again. There's two ways of um, highlighting white, you can go mixing it with white to make it kind of a stark pale pastel colour uh, or you can highlight with orange to make it a warmer colour and that's how I split these two reds. The reds for the eyes are going to have that more orange look to them and then the purity seals are going to be more of a stark uh, pastel highlight and that will split those two reds and make, keep them separate. So it's just Wazdaka red mixed with about one third white will do. I don't repaint the base colour, I just go straight on with the final highlight. And I just highlight just the crest. There, maybe a tad more white. And maybe you worry about it looking too pink. It won't look too bad as long as you keep the original red on some part. I'm not going to touch the middle, it's just that edge of the crest there. And that's come out nice just here on the shoulder and then just that raised skull in the middle and then again the raised skull and a bit there. That's that done, that's a quick one. So you imagine in a batch of 10 you're just mixing up one bit of colour and then just flying through that and uh, that's that, the wax part of the purity seal done. 
You then want to go uh, keep the white open. Go to your shabbati bone or your bleach bone, and then just straight from the pot, give recoat the purity seal in its original colour, but just keeping the details. So I'll just run the brush over the top along the side there, like so, and then just here on the shoulder pad. Solid colour, just catching the edges and underneath, and then the one down here by the feet, just covering it from all the angles. And once that's dry, I uh, take some Shabbati bone. And I would say about 50 50 white, perhaps even uh, a bit more white. We'll do it about 60 40 with the white, and this is your final highlight. And with that, you're just picking out the edges and it just lifts that a bit more. raised areas you can pick out and that just lifts that purity seal nicely that looks good okay so that's the purity seals done then just the lettering for them and for that I take some uh, bad on black used to look grey, but I've found you're looking to make it a weathered, faded look. Painting on straight black is too stark. So I take a brush of a very nice sharp tip, fine detail brush, something with a nice thin tip. And then I take the Ushabati bone again and mix that with black instead. And it's kind of warmer grey colour. Some more black needed. So it's like a dark warm grey as opposed to a black and they're watered down quite significantly. That's about right. You can see it there on the palette. And then with a nice sharp tip I just paint on the lettering. It's just a case of like sort of shaking with the brush very small amounts and that just makes it look like lettering instead of very straight lines you're creating a kind of um, ripply effect just to make it look like it's handwriting and then just around the other side going all right so yeah that's not quite so stark as just solid black and because it's watered down a little bit it creates a little bit of fading on it as well which it adds to the realism so this is going on really well and those purity seals are being picked out really nice they're a nice feature to space marines it's worth doing them well so those purity seals come on really nice what we would say uh, is if you do it too stark and you, you've put it on you think, oh no, it's too stark, what am I going to do? The colours are too strong. Just take some Shabbati bone, water it down, and then just put a glaze over the top, very watery effect, and that will tone down the colour and it won't disturb what you've done underneath. So by all means do that. That's Purity Seal's finished on him. Next colour is the bronze on the chest. So you take your Hashak copper, and again, just one highlight for this will finish that stage off. And I take the old mithril silver and I'm just going to mix those two to make a final highlight. I'm going to use a standard brush here because it's not going to be, you could paint the highlight on uh, but that will take you 
a long time so I try and just do a dry brush over the top but like a wet dry brush if you know what I mean there's still plenty of pigment on the brush you're mixing the hashtag copper with the silver um, so you're making a, a silvery hashtag copper and then I'm just running the brush over the detail because that brush isn't too overloaded it's just catching the highlight and it's not filling in the detailed area and you'll see that just picks that out just nice you can see now that single highlights enough to pick that out not much effort there all you've done is your base color washes and then a final highlight to pick that out and it looks great so that's that part finished so the miniature's coming along really well uh, just that highlight there on the crest has come out really nice right, it's nice and simple just a base colour and the wash and then the final highlight is all you need and it's created a really nice effect um, so just looking at the miniature here there's not much else to do really uh, I think we'll do the eyes next and it doesn't matter what order you decide to do things in I've, I'm going for the eyes here because I don't want to put my fingers on any wet paint that's drying for these ammo pouches at the back so I'll show you how to do the eyes Right then, for the eyes, it's actually quite straightforward. You've put that base colour in of the blood red, and then you've shaded it with the two washes. So the shading work's been done for you. So just two colours. The orange, which I take some on a nice fine tip of a brush, and I tuck it into the corner. Here, it's the front corner, the, one, uh, the front part of the head. And that just highlights that just lifts it, you think you wouldn't notice it but it does, it helps lift that out roll the figure over and then just do the other side looking to cover, tucking it in the corner, about a third of the eye gets that, the front part and that just lifts that highlight there that's that done and then I take a very fine tip dip it in the white so I've got a tiny little ball of white on the end and then I tuck one dot into the corner of the miniature, just there. I roll the figure over, just touching it into the corner, that's better. That's placed nicely. So you can see the two dots in the corner, and that just brings those eyes to life. They look really good, and uh, that's all that's required for the eyes there. So you've got the scorched brown to do and I just keep that very simple, I just go over the base colour uh, once again just a standard brush will do and I just go on nice and solid with that colour keeping the shaded areas all done and then just neatening what's there make sure I get down the sides underneath and that's that and that just picks out that detail I don't want to make it too detailed and spend a lot of time working on that because it's not really a significant part of the miniature so there he is all the highlighting bits and bobs done one final stage and that is the chipping effect and uh, that will really enhance the figure. You could leave him as he is but just that chipping will help create uh, a seasoned look. Right so chipping effect, you're just on the iron breaker again and it's the same colour throughout, you're not, you don't need to switch to any other silver which is handy. So on the bolt gun you can do that first, doesn't matter I'll just pick out the main details. There's that skull on there. Run that brush along the wing. And you can see it just enhances the metallic parts. The gun looks really dirty and then what you're doing is just picking out the detail again. It brightens it up and then takes away some of the dirtiness of the gun but it still keeps a, a fair amount to make it look old enough and then just detail on top of the gun there. Roll the 
figure over. Just doing the metallic parts here. Of the figure. Looks good. And then, on the black bodywork, I pick out any bolts. There's a few. And then just a chipped effect around some of the edges. And then a few dots and scrapes. Look good. Do not overdo it. You can overkill and it'll look terrible. Uh, less is better. You want to be subtle with your chipping, not over the top. So I'll put in just one. Two, two little bits of scraping and a couple of dots and then some bits around the edges and that's enough. You want to still you still want it to look like a black panel uh, that's chipped, um, not too overkill with the chipping. And then just start anywhere you want, maybe we can do the head here. Wherever you think a chip would take place, right on the corner of the helmet here I think there'd be one. Uh, might be a few spatters on the front there, around that facial area. And there's a few metallic bits I'm just going to go over there. There and there. I'm going to put a little bit on the eyebrow. I'm going to run a few chips on this head crest. And then I reckon I'll do a scrape to choose an angle and then just run the brush along it. And that creates uh, a little scrape on the yellow for you. And uh, just there. Again, you mustn't do too much, that's enough on the head. Just going to do a few bits on the backpack, a few chips there. Then on the shoulder pads, it, that chipping comes out really nice because you've got that black rim. Uh, that will pick up that chipping really good. And then a few spatters on the shoulder pad, a few spatters there, and then again, just picking up some chipping on the shoulder pads there. That looks alright. Pretty good. And just around the arm there. Really don't need too much. A little bit on the fingers. Not too much. Just rolling a miniature around. Elbow pad gets a bit. A little bit there. So there's three things. There's edges to chip. the spatters, which is just dots on the brush. And then uh, scrapes, which is just a, some brush strokes to see where it's uh, scraped. I'm just working on the legs here. So up around where the knee joint is, there'd be, I think there would be a bit where he's knelt down and fired and fallen over and so on. So I'm going to put a fair bit of chipping on there, a few scrapes maybe, on there, on there, a couple of bits on the fire area, not quite as much, some chipping around the feet, you don't feel you have to do loads, that's the key with this one, less is better, I mean even around the shoulder pads there perhaps I've done a little bit too much but it doesn't matter so much, it's not too bad. A little bit of chipping there, a bit of chipping there. A couple of dots on this ammo pouch, which would be metal. Just pick them out. Backpack, just running over. There's a couple of uh, studs there. You don't have to pick them out. That skull, we'll pick that out. The exhaust intake, just the, the rim of it, I think I'll pick out. Just the edging of it, because it's you try not to make it completely rusty, like it's abandoned, but still seasoned. So you you still wanting to keep the metal look, but still have a seasoned look to it. Then just a few bits around the grills there. Not too much. That's it. And then around the back of the legs here, a few chips here and there will do. That's pretty good. 
the grenades pick out a little bit of detail on them that'll do and then just some chipping uh, around the feet and just looking around the miniature to see if there's anywhere else not really so that's that done. It didn't take too long, but it can take a while when you've got ten of them on the go. Uh, but that's his details picked out. One other stage. You can do it if you want. I have been with these, and that is I take the Agrax Earth Shade and then with a an old brush, an old stipply brush, I just apply a wash to around the feet. I just think that area would be dirtier if they've been on campaign. So the feet get a wash, and then with not too much ink on it, I just sort of stab some splatters halfway up, or just under halfway up on the leg, if you can see that coming up. Just a few splatters there, and I think that just weathers it a little bit better. The feet wouldn't be clean as much, have some splattering on them from all of the... Uh, Marching they do, and combat and so on. There, yellow is a good colour for doing all those kind of weathering effects. It's nice and bright, so it will pick up that kind of detail. Other than that, he's done, and uh, I think he's come out really well. He looks good. See the armour chipping effect there. Your colours are done. Once those base colours are done, you do spend a little bit of time doing the silver and the black. Once your washes are on, and you get past that yellow stage then uh, there's only a few bits really to do on the miniature so the key part for space marines is that the overall color scheme that color whatever color it may be red yellow green blue uh, mastering that and then the rest is just minor details so he's come out really nice um, just the last part to do on him uh, is the transfers which i'm going to show you how to do and then also just finishing off on the the base with the flock, and once that's done, he's ready for varnishing. We're going to transfers here. I'm going to show you how to get the transferring done. There's our finished miniature, and we've got some transfers to apply. So you can see the transfers there. Uh, probably one of the most impressive parts for Imperial Fists. It's important you get it right. I think the transfers are absolutely key for Imperial Fists. They look so good. I love the black and the white uh, colour scheme. For the insignia of these is one of the main reasons I chose them. Um, and the black and white tie really nice for the fifth company with the black shoulder pads. Uh, so, difficult one because Space Marine shoulder pads are rounded and uh, transfers tend to bend and ripple and they don't look very good. So, there's just a little technique I'll show you for that. So, I've gone and bought myself the Forge World. Uh, transfer sheet, it's a huge and A4 sized sheet, you get loads and loads of transfers, you get all your vehicle stuff on there and you get all of your tactical squad markings as well so uh, that was important, I think it is if, if you're going to collect one of these chapters that requires uh, these transfers then get the sheet from Forge World, it's worth doing um, so I've got that at the start and I've been able to apply those transfers on so you just, from your transfer sheet, and this applies any type of transfers you're doing. We can do Imperial Fist ones here, but this technique, I use it for all my transfers. Um, so this guy has got an Imperial Fist insignia. So we'll take that one. I'll just cut it out. And then we will require a... Tactical squad insignia as well for the other shoulder pad, and then I usually I put a skull on here, but there's a purity seal in the way, so I'm just not going to bother with the skull on the side of the leg there. So just those two, and I'll just dip them in my water and just give them a little while to separate from the backing that they come on. Whilst that's going on, I will then need some PVA glue. Just going to put a blob of that on the palette. 
I like using PVA, it helps stop that ghosty effect that you get. You put a transfer on to a figure and then where the transfer is see-through, you can see like a ghost effect on it and you can see where the transfer actually is. When you put PVA on and mix it in with the water, it gets rid of that and uh, stops that from happening. It blends the transfer into the background and uh, that works a lot better. So, we'll do the tactical squad one first and for that I'm going to use a base coat brush. Quite a stiff one, so it's an old brush, it doesn't matter if I mix it with glue. And then to prepare the surface I take a bit of water, a bit of PVA glue, 50-50, spread that on the surface. So that's going to go behind the transfer, so the transfer is going to stick on but it's going to be helped by this glue at the same time. I've never had transfers come off um, and I think it's because I'm using this glue and then sealing it with varnish afterwards it helps seal the whole thing in and I've handled miniatures over and over and haven't had a problem. So I'm just trying to pick up the transfer here on the tip of the brush. There it is. And then I'm just going to bring it into contact with the figure. Then put the brush down. And I use the tip of a knife. Or you can use a pin. You be careful because you don't want to tear it. And then I just, with the tip of the knife, very gently push it into place. Now I cut previously, I'd cut the lower part of this transfer before I cut it out. Uh, and that means that the black here, it doesn't have that clear trim on it, that's been cut away and it can butt up and tuck into the bottom of that shoulder pad. Now I'm just checking to make sure it's square and in the center of the shoulder pad. That looks pretty good. And then here's the technique that I use. I can see there's a couple of folds here at the top. The bottom's fine, it's rolled around quite nicely. But just at the top there, I place the knife on top of the figure and roll it and I make a small cut in the transfer. I'm gonna do it from the other side. Wherever there's a fold, I'll just put a small cut and then I'm going to put one straight down the center and then take the knife away and then with a dryer brush, I take some more PVA glue and just start applying that to the surface of the transfer going in the direction of the cut and that just pushes the transfer down. And now where those splits have occurred, uh, the, the split, the transfer where it's folded has instead started to overlap just enough so that, that fold is taken away and you can't see where I've cut. I've only done it very gently, just enough to split the transfer and now that has wrapped itself around the figure very nicely indeed. I used to dab with a tissue to dry it off. Um, I don't bother with that anymore, just patiently just leave it to dry. I found I was putting tissue on and the transfer was coming away, the tissue was sticking to the glue. So just don't disturb it now. Any excess water that you have, you just take a dry brush and suck it up and then just coat with the glue to keep it in place. Uh, so that's come out pretty good. Very good. Okay. So we'll go to the next side and We've got difficulty here because we've got this transfer and then there's a purity still right in the way. So I'm going to have to deal with that. So again, some water. You notice I'm not using absolutely loads of it. Um, just enough to keep it wet. You have to move quite quick. I don't want this to dry. So the PVA and the water just going on. Going to add a bit more. Then I take the Imperial Fist Insignia. Quite a big transfer this one. I apply it onto the figure, lose the excess water, and then I'm going to use the knife to position this now. And you can see this is a fiddly one. This purity seal is right in the way. So, what I'm going to do, holding it in place, I'm going to cut around the purity seal with a knife and then from the other angle just going to roll it along 
And I'm going to remove that part of the transfer that's in the way. And then with the knife again, I'm going to play around with it to move it into place. It's all right. I think I can lose a bit more. So again, just making a cut, removing the old part of the transfer, it's not needed, and then moving the transfer down, that's better. That's pretty good, once that's in place, I can then make my splits and I can see where the crit folds and creases are. I'm going to put one here, I'm not cutting all the way to the middle. I'm going to put one there, I'm going to do one going straight up, another one here, another one here, okay. and then with the glue, very carefully, just going over the miniature now, and cutting those splits has worked really well. Even with a rounded transfer it's working okay. The design hasn't been disturbed and the folding's been eliminated. Now there is another way of doing it, that's buying a, a uh, transfer uh, chemical that you put on and it loosens the plastic the transfer itself makes it a lot easier makes it um, sort of shrink to fit and that's another effective way of doing it by just use the splitting and glue technique and uh, it seems to work fine so that's the insignia on and you can see that transfer has wrapped itself around the shoulder pad that very curved surface and you can hardly notice the splits I don't think they're significant really uh, if you really want to if you can see them you just about see one there, then you can add a blotch of white to it. No problem. That's that done. Don't disturb it, let it dry. The other thing I do once the transfers are done, it's easily missed, and that is to take a bit of the silver and just add a scraper or a chip or two onto the transfer you've just applied. And that just blends it in to the rest of the figure. So just a few bits onto there. That looks good. Right, once that's all dry, uh, for basing, I just use a flock, it's called Verdant Green. And it's not it's not a medium grain, it's sort of short grain, it's nice, nice colour. Um, and I've got that from a company called Total System Scenic. Total System Scenic, they make uh, wargaming terrain tiles. And uh, that's the flock that they use on their grassland terrain. It's nice stuff, you can buy it in packets, only about £2.50. And the whole pack will last you for it. Well, a couple of armies probably. So uh, I get that. You can look them up on the web and uh, see if you can get a hold of that. So just take an old brush and some PVA glue and then just blob that onto the base just in patchy areas. Put on as much or as little as you want depending on the terrain. Mine's City Fight, so it's just a few blobs um, is enough just to take away from that grey. Introduce another colour of interest into the figure. Put the, put the figure into the tub, tap off the excess, blow away the excess and then run the, my thumb around the rim to take off any spare flock. Right, so there he is. I've finished Imperial Fist, the basing is done, transfers are done and uh, I think he looks pretty good. I'll add him to my other tactical marines that I've done. Uh, one of my favourite chapters as far as colour schemes are concerned. Looking forward to putting this army together. But once you've mastered one, perhaps you're new to this, practice just on one figure. And once you're happy with the result, then you can start batch painting. Um, and that's what I'm doing. I'll show you the next lot that I'm working on here. You can see I'm just painting nine. Uh, it would have been ten, but uh, the tenth one I've used for the tutorial here. So there's nine marines coming along. Love these guys with the cone shaped heads and the studded armour. Mark VI armour, so James tells me. Um, so I've got quite a few of those. 
and force. But you can see there that I'm up to the stage. I've done the black and the silver on them, just working along. I have them in a row, and uh, I'll just do one at a time, working my way along. There's the sergeant that I showed you earlier, probably one of my favourite ones. Nice pose that on. Just did that sort of industrial uh, yellow and black stripped effect on the chainsaws, and then uh, just a uh, bare, bare headed one there just to make him separate from all the others it's come out really nice, they look nice together these imperial fists and then for other figures here's one of the uh, les cannons from one of the tactical squads same technique used there and then I've done a uh, rhino and that's come out really well I would encourage you uh, if they're available to get them then to really set these off get the forge world accessories for that chapter I've got I've used one here on the, the door of this rhino really makes the uh, figures uh, look like they belong to that chapter it makes them very unique it's not just any old rhino it really is an imperial fist rhino and I put that resin door on, uh, well that's insignia, so that looks really good. A couple others I've used, um, I just bought one pack and I'm going to spread them around uh, the whole force, but just here and there, and that makes a big difference. You can see the chipping effect that I've done, it's the same, exactly the same, going over the yellow with that yellow mixed with white, exactly the same, there's not any difference at all. Um, just the same weathering technique with the washes here, just stippling with the Agrax Earth Shade. Stippling with some black here for the exhaust fumes, and then the same method for doing the transfers on the figure as well. There's a nice big one for the Imperial Fists from the uh, Forge World pack. So, and again, you see here the writing here Tritos is the name I've given to this rhino. Um, that is just again using that uh, black mixed with the uh, watered down. Uh, Ushabati bone. That's just so it's not a solid black, it's just a weathered look. And uh, I think that's come out really well. Not really much difference, it's the same technique as I said. Here's a land speed I've been working on. Uh, that one's come out really well. And I'm um, happy with that. Just the same thing again, all the chipping and uh, effects the same as before. So that's how to paint Imperial Fists. Really nice force to do, and hopefully you've seen how in this tutorial you're able to master that yellow, which is a difficult colour, but uh, with this technique I think you'll be able to make a good success of it. So that's it, check out my channel for other painting tutorials, uh, plenty of others out there, there's a Eldar tutorial, one for Tau, Orcs, uh, Blood Angels, Dark Eldar, and Necrons. A lot of tutorials out there. It's the same um, format. I'll show you exactly how it's done. You just take a miniature, follow along exactly, and uh, there's no reason why you can't paint to the same standard as this. And uh, enjoy painting your army. It's That's half of the fun, is uh, having the satisfaction of painting a force and then having the joy of using it in games. So, thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, look out for this army featuring in battle reports in the future as it builds up. Uh, check out the other battle reports as well, some great games out there. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.